Okay, so this one um, is what I would call um, just something to think about about the school system. So I'm going to call it the case against homework. So as I have been going through these processes and these things and recognizing where my life has been a lot more difficult than a lot of people's um, because of just things I can't control about the way that I think and, um, and how much likability is important to people to be successful, which it shouldn't be, but it is. Um, and there are some things, that's not what this means, that likability is. I just emphasize that because I feel strongly about it. This is not what this is about. This is about homework. So when I was younger and in school and stuff, um, especially in the earlier years in school, I remember having a lot of homework and a lot of projects and a lot of things, which, by the way, that's what killed my school. That's what killed high school for me was homework. I could pass tests. I did well and all that stuff. I was there in class. You know, it was fine, but you gave me homework. Nah, I'm not doing it. So the reason I think that homework is actually more of a, it makes the, the it, it creates an imbalance on the playing field because when some people have a home life that is great and it's conducive to doing homework and you go home and people are there to help you and you da 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 and you're done and great. Or projects you're assigned and you have parents who are really in the process and really want to and sometimes actually do some of the work for you, you know, you know what I'm saying? So then you have people who don't have that. And when they go home, it's hard to even find two feet of space for yourself to try and do homework. Or um, you have projects that are assigned and there's not anybody to help you. And these projects, the longer we have parents participating so actively in these, the more teachers expect that. And some people don't have that. And so when they go, the, the assignment is actually already a little bit over what a ch child themselves can do. And the teacher might say, well, I'm trying to, you know, make it so that parents can be a part, but, but that doesn't guarantee the parent can do that. And so then you're just screwing over the child. Um, the other part of it is like just time. So for me, when I was in high school, um, I, we lived far from my high school and because we were in Las Vegas kind of with one of the booms of the city and so it was like they're building high schools fast they could but they just had too many people so I lived where I had to go it was over an hour before school started to go wait at the bus stop and then I would take a bus it took an hour for the bus to get to school and then it took an hour for the bus to get home and so because I was the last so I was like the first stop going there and the last stop going home so um, so for me, by the time I got home, it had already been like, what, you at school for about like six hours. So seven hours counting the bus ride there and eight hours. So I'm done y'all. <laughs> like I'm spent. I don't, I can't sit down and try and, and now you want to take the last few hours I have of my day and I'm supposed to do all this papers and yada, yada, yada. And so I was really not good with homework and my family always tried to help that. But then that also added tension there because I didn't want to be called out to do homework because I was done. And so I didn't want to talk too much because then I knew they'd find out I had homework. So anyway, um, so it really does kind of skew the playing field a little bit. And nowadays when kids are at school, the truth is there's so many other resources for lectures, you know, like, um, a teacher can give a really succinct lecture, which is hard to do, but it is something you can't, that can be done. Um, to really just hone in on the main points and stop and then have people do their work at school while you're in there. So because so, most of the times we don't really know what we're missing until we start to put something in action. Anyway, we might feel like we totally have an understanding and then we're like, Oh, wait a minute. Then you have the t instructor still there to answer those questions and then maybe take a moment and say, Oh, so-and-so just asked a really good question. Let me just let everybody know this and, or define this thing that was unclear and then go back to doing the, the work. And then it's actually like the students are doing their work themselves on campus. Everybody is equally like you have the same environment in which to do your work. You have the same amount of help to do your work. And um, for those who need more time, then that's where something like a study hall comes in um, where they can actually have a little bit of that time at school to be 
working on their homework if they need just a little extra time. And um, to me, that makes a lot more sense for giving people an even footing on their grades and, and for helping teachers know how to have fair expectations of homework and that kind of thing. If you're actually watching and seeing the time it takes for people to do these things, to do these assignments, and you're part of it and you're coaching through it and all that, then you kind of have a better gauge for what they are actually able to do themselves and how much of it is being picked up by parents that are trying to help their child get ahead without realizing that by changing that dynamic, you're raising the bar for everybody, you know? And so, um, I don't know. I just think it's something to think about because I think that that is where a lot of our skewed expectations of people and unfair things in the workplace kind of start or in the school, that school age kind of thing. So anyway, food for thought. <laughs>